Hi everyone, I'm Courtney Gill. I'm one of your registered dietitians. I'm here today to talk with you about creating healthy habits for your eating habits. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that I've heard from a lot of you and from my family and friends during this time of um, you know, isolation and being at home for so long is that all, a lot of our good habits have kind of gone out the window and some not so great habits have kind of snuck in with really with just so much in uncertainty and so many unanswered questions right now. A lot of us are really gravitating towards our comfort foods. I've said it before, you know, in my videos on hunger versus appetite and also in our metabolism boosting video is that routine and habit is really influenced by you. You have control over it. And I think that's one of the first things we really want to remember is that we aren't um, at risk of kind of just going, um, being a tumbleweed in this whole situation. You have control over creating better habits for you and for your family. And today we are really gonna focus on that. Um, I think that it's important to remember that it takes about 21 days on average to create new habits that actually last and stick. We have now been at home for about eight weeks, which means some of those bad habits have been created and they are really sticking. So we want to make sure that we are thinking about um, what else can we do? How can we make some changes? How can we make sure that these better changes for us are sticking? Or maybe it's just creating a routine for yourself in this new normal that all of us are kind of experiencing. And, and that's the message today. Figure out where you are and where you want to go. I think a lot of the time we think about our um, habits and about nutrition specifically, even fitness and wellness, is, is that it's all or nothing, right? It's black or white. And one of the things you really want to remember is that it's not. I tell people all of the time, and if you've attended any of my classes before, you know that I say it very often that there is no bad foods, right? There is no black and white in nutrition. It's very gray. Everything is gray. It's how you incorporate foods into your diet. It's the quantity and it's the frequency of the, how much that you have um, in at any given time. And that's what we really want to focus in on when you focus on new nutrition habits and what can you do to change and to fix or and or just shift what you are doing right now. So one of the things I encourage you to do is number one, if you don't have a routine, is that we need to get into a routine. Eating balanced and eating healthy does require a little bit of effort, but once you get into the routine of it, your body responds and you feel better and you actually want to keep doing it to feel keep feeling good. So that's one thing to remember. You want to think about a routine that's good for you, right? You want to make sure that it's whatever's going to work for you at this given time. You know, all of us are in a fast paced life and typically, you know, we are up and out of the door really early and sometimes we're not home till really late. And it can be defeating if you're trying to eat, you know, three meals a day and get snacks in and you're trying to eat that traditional way of eating of breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. And you don't have to eat that way. And that's one thing that I often recommend to people is that don't feel pigeonholed into that traditional way of eating. Most of our schedules are not traditional. I know in my household, we certainly are not. You know, I come home, it's sports, it's running around, it's my husband gets home late for dinner. I mean, everyone's kind of eating maybe sporadically some nights, but you know, you make an effort to kind of pick the things that mean the most to you and to your family and create that routine for whatever it is for you. So if it, it means in the morning that you're eating, you know, a snack right when you're running out the door and then you're having breakfast at like 11 and then you're having lunch at two and then a snack at five and then dinner at eight, that's okay. But you wanna make sure that you're sticking to the schedule and the routine. That's the important piece of the puzzle. And now that we're at home, the routine that you may have had before just doesn't fit for what's happening now, what's happening in your house or your apartment or with your roommates or with you, right? So you wanna figure out what works for you right now. You can always change the timing or what meal goes where, what snack goes where, but I encourage you to at least put some structure. So within an hour of getting up in the morning, try to eat something, you know, whether that's gonna be a breakfast or a snack, that's up to you. And then from that point in the day, I recommend trying to eat about every three to four hours. So kind of set a routine, a schedule of eating. It will give you a little bit of normalcy and make you feel like 
things aren't, you know, completely erratic. Um, and again, it doesn't matter if you're eating, you know, lunch at 3 p.m. It's just that you're kind of working on the timing of eating every three to four hours because if it's a free for all in the kitchen and you kind of find yourself in the kitchen every half an hour, every hour. There's really no rhyme or reason when we're eating, what we're eating. And we, our brains get confused, our bodies get confused, and we don't feel great in those instances. So the creating the structure and letting your body function like a machine, like it likes to work, will make you actually feel better. You'll digest your food better, you'll utilize your energy better, and you will feel better. You know, the second piece of the puzzle is really making sure that we are remembering that when you do start some new habits and routines, I think it kind of goes back to the mentality of resolutions, right? New Year's resolutions. How many times do we all make them? We have so almost all my clients over the last 15 years have always made New Year's resolutions in January. And I'm all for it if it's something that it's going to help you reach your ultimate goal. But setting a goal that's not lofty, right? You if you say like, oh, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna lose, you know, 150 pounds in six months. I mean, it's just not realistic for most people. So what you wanna make sure that you are doing is making goals that are attainable, something that you can feel good about in a time frame that you can feel good about and make sure that it's individualized. It's great to have a buddy, um, you know, a workout buddy or, you know, someone that you're doing a food log with and you have accountability with that person. It's, a, it's great to have a buddy, but it's not one size fit all for healthy habits. What's healthy for you may not be healthy for me or healthy for another person, right? We're all an individual. And all of us have different needs for our bodies, you know, for all of our macronutrients, for protein, carbs, and fats, for all of our minerals, depending on what you might be allergic to or what you do and don't like to eat, right? Personal preferences, what you have to eat in, within your family or your budget or what's available or seasonality, right? There's so many factors that go into what we choose and what we eat. And when we rely on kind of doing this group group mentality of, you know, well, we're all going to do this X, Y, or Z diet, you know, it can be an okay jumping off point to get you started with creating new habits, but it doesn't often lead to sticking with whatever habits were created because just because your best friend is doing something and they feel great on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will. And it will be a deterrent then for you because if you, you feel like, oh, you're watching them and they're succeeding and then you, you feel lousy because you know, you're doing the same things and you're not seeing the results. So you wanna remember that setting healthful goals for yourself and wellness goals, specifically nutrition related goals, are not one size fits all. You wanna make sure that you're thinking about what you need to change for you. So we pick these new goals, we pick these new habits that we wanna create into our routines. I want you to think about making them SMART goals. You've probably heard this acronym before. So I'm gonna run through what the SMART goals mean. So number one, the S, is that it's specific. You wanna make sure that you're picking something that is specific because when they're very large, uh, broad goals, what happens is that it encompasses way too many things. And you can kind of, one, you can either misinterpret it your own self, right? Because we all kind of get into that spot where we, where we give ourselves a little bit too much leeway. Just make sure that you're picking something very specific so that we can, second letter in the acronym, M, measure it. It needs to be measurable. If we aren't picking things that are measurable, then it's really hard to, to really look at the whole big picture and say, you know, have I accomplished this? And one of the things about um, healthy habits and goal setting is that we want to feel accomplished. We don't want to feel defeated before we even really get started and get into those, you know, 21 days of really trying to make this new habit stick. So you want to make sure that it's measurable. Um, the third piece of the SMART uh, um, acronym is attainable. Make sure it's something that you can do, right? If you're someone who eats out regularly, like I'm talking like, you know, five, six times a week, maybe b between breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like anything, you're just grabbing a meal out and you say, okay, I'm not going to eat out anymore. I know it's high in salt, no sides fat. I'm, not, I'm just not going to eat out anymore. That's really tough because going from, you know, eating out quite often, almost every single day or multiple times in a day, and then eating out not at all, and especially if you're not used to cooking for yourself and shopping for yourself in the quantity that you would need, it's a hard adjustment. And you almost really set yourself up for failure. So you wanna make sure it's something attainable for you, right? So if you are eating out right now five or six times a week, which I'm sure not a lot of us are, but say you, if you are, 
then do something that's realistic. Maybe you're going to drop that down to, to eating out no more than three times in a week. The next thing in the um, SMART acronym is R, which is relevancy. You want to make sure that this goal is relevant to you, you know, which in other words, um, really that it's individualized. Make sure that it's something that is, is for you. Just because, you know, your um, best friend is doing something and, and their goal is to maybe not have soda. If you don't really have soda that often and then you pick soda, I mean, eliminating that out of your diet, it's like not that tough. So like, what are you, what are you really changing? Right. Or vice versa. If you pick something that like just doesn't agree with your body or if somebody's giving up dairy, right. But your favorite thing is yogurt, right. It just, you just need to make sure it's relevant to you. Um, the next la and last um, piece of the SMART goals is that it is time-based. And this is really going in, kind of hand-in-hand hand with the measurable aspect of SMART goals. You want to make sure that you have a time frame so that we can really look at it and, ex and assess have we met this goal? Is it helpful for you? And can we move on from this goal to something else or can we build upon it? So we want to make sure that we set a time frame or time parameter for the new goal or that we are going to have. So, you know, kind of think about that when you're picking. So wrapping this up, I just want you to really think about what those SMART goals are going to be for you, how to choose your new goals or habits um, that will help to impact your health and well-being slowly but surely, right? Small, sustainable changes that overall stick and they make the most impact on your health and wellness. And that's what we really want to be focusing on. And when you pick these, these habits and goals, really try to focus on um, more health habit versus uh, like a number, right? Like when you pick weight, which I think a lot of us tend to like gravitate towards, all right, I'm going to lose, you know, two pounds this week. It's tough because one, not all health is related to, to just weight. You know, yes, we want to make sure that our body fat percentage is leaner. Yes, we're worried about our heart health and et cetera. But I think it's more important and more impactful if you pick things that are concrete and you pick things that are more um, health-based, nutrition-based. So, you know, maybe it's that, okay, I'm going to make sure that I eat, um, you know, three servings of fruit each day this week. Or maybe I'm going to try one new um, vegetable each time I go to the grocery store in the next month. Or maybe I'm going to increase my water intake from, you know, four cups in the day to six cups every single day for the next week. Um, but think about something that is, you know, measurable and impactful and will really start to make slow changes for you. So if you feel like you are struggling with kind of choosing your health habits or identifying what might be your struggle points, you know, remember that there are resources here for um, you. We're all here to help you kind of get through this time of, of isolation and of being home. And then also, you know, as we slowly transform back into work, um, that we're all kind of in the safe, healthy, and um, wellness mindset. So that's what I got for you today. Check out the handout that goes along with this video. I hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe, stay healthy, and um, set those SMART goals. Bye. See you guys later.